Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, the Legnan has some sort of issue mechanically. Uh, when I bought it, the engine was smoking, or the exhaust pipe, there was smoke coming out of it. Um, and I was told it was a turbo seal failure. Um, now, I'm not sure how to diagnose that for definite without taking the turbos off and having a look at them. But I thought we could have a look around the engine bay and see if there's any signs that concern me. We could check the coolant, the oil, and generally just look around the engine bay and see if anything suspect is going on. Now, the only thing that concerns me with this car is the fact it's a GFB boost controller in the um, on the center console. Now, the trouble with boost controllers is you can decide how much boost you want, and usually we all want our cars to be as fast as possible, and everyone turns them up too far. Um, it's just the way it is. Also, the ECU doesn't have a map, as far as I'm aware, for higher boost levels. And that's why the ECU needs to control the boost. On a mapped car or an aftermarket car, there are boost tables, fuel tables. So if the car over boosts, it should, if it's mapped for it, put more fuel in. So some people turn the boost up and some ECUs will actually put the fuel in. But I'm not sure if that's the case on this Legnum. It's quite hard actually to find information 20 or so, 23 years after it was made on the internet. It's quite a rare car. It's very hard to find tuning information on these. So I don't know for sure, but uh, that's the only thing that is causing me a little bit of concern. So let's go and look at the engine bay. We're gonna look at the fluids and just see if there's anything suspect. We come around the front, the bonnet's looking much better without those razors we did in the last video. Now Banjo's gonna open it and we're gonna just take a little look around the engine bay see if anything suspect is going on. Now, first thing I do notice is there's a lot of cobwebs, which in itself is not a problem. So today we're gonna check the oil level, the coolant level. We're gonna check the oil cap to see for a milky residue. And also we're gonna look down the oil filler hole and see if there's any sort of buildup or deposits in the engine bay, uh, in the engine rather. That'll give us an idea as to whether this engine's been regularly serviced throughout his life so um, that's the plan for today and the first thing to do is check the oil so I'm gonna send the fanul in to go and get some tissue what's your showing Banj? not much really. not much uh, let's just focus on that well it's over the minimum so there's nothing wrong with the oil level okay so the second thing I want to do to check the health on this Galant engine is just to simply take off the cap and if there's a milky residue under this cap that would not necessarily mean that the head gaskets fail but what it does mean is there's water or moisture in the crankcase so if we have a look underneath what do we see we do see a milky residue now is that cause for concern does that mean the head gaskets failed not necessarily and I'll tell and the reason for that is this car has been standing for a long time so moisture will always find its way in but if that does persist and it doesn't disappear then that will show then that um, there's a problem another thing I want to check is the coolant level now I've already checked it and I can see that there's absolutely nothing in there so it's at this point that I start to get a little concerned. So we'll just have a look. And you can't see anything down there. And if I wiggle it, there's a minimum and a max, and that's absolutely empty. Like, there's nothing in that top up canister. So it doesn't mean that it's been overheated. It doesn't mean there's not enough water in there for the engine to cool, but it's below minimum. It's fact, it's off the, it's off the thing. That's how low it is. So. We're gonna to top the coolant up, and then we're gonna see what happens. So we're gonna check what I assume is the gearbox dipstick. Now being an automatic, like an engine, it will have a dipstick on it. But even the Impretzas have dipsticks, and they're not, um, you know, they're manual. So they have a dipstick as well. So we'll just pop that in. That's spot on, that is. There's no problems there. 
So I'm going to top up the reservoir. I'm not going to start the car because there's no need to really. But at least we need to know there's coolant in there should I have to move it in an emergency. But one last thing, which gives us an idea as to whether this car has been looked after, not just by the previous owner, I'm not talking about them, I mean in this lifetime, is inside this rocker cover. So that's what happens when in 23 years of existing, someone misses an oil change or extends an oil change too far. Because what can happen is the oil turns black because his job is to sort of keep the deposits from sticking to the engine. And if the oil is left in too long, it becomes full and then the deposits do actually stick to the engine. So looking in there, we can see, I think, looking in there, we can see there's definitely deposits on the caps. Well, that in itself is not a problem. Um, it does show that we should probably put an engine flush through the vehicle, get really nice clean oil in, and maybe even an oil with a detergent in, like a, a special oil that's got a higher grade of detergent which will actually break down that stuff and then in a thousand miles hopefully it'll be clean and we can do another oil change then. So that gives us an idea of the condition of the engine on this, so what is my analysis? I'm concerned that the smoke coming out the back is a head gasket failure now, not a turbo, due to the fact that it is milky residue on the cap and there's no coolant. Now both of those things makes me think maybe head gasket, maybe oil's leaking into the combustion chamber and going out of the exhaust, maybe water's leaking in and oil and going out of the exhaust. Um, maybe it's nothing, but I can't really worry about it right now. Now another thing that I've spotted in the engine bay, this boost pipe doesn't even have a clamp on it. So either someone's, well someone must have forgotten to put it back on at some point. So if we went down the road in this car, the boost would leak all out of that hose. Maybe the turbos have oversped, that's why the seal's gone. It's just impossible to tell. Um, so let's top the water up and then we'll take you from there. Okay, so although I wasn't planning on starting the car up, we're going to start it up anyway, let it get up to temperature and let it idle for a bit. We're going to have a good look around the car. I was thinking I need to diagnose what the smoke is for myself really, rather than just being told what it is. So I'm going to try and do that. Once the car's up to temperature, I can see if it's losing fluid, losing oil, anything like that's going on. Things which I didn't even check when buying it. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do, start it up. Sounds sweet as an earth actually. Yeah, I don't I don't see any smoke in that. No, me neither. Oh there is, there is. idling now for probably 20 minutes and it's finally up to temperature to the point that the fans are coming on and off they're not currently on engine sounds pretty healthy now it's 
the tapping has stopped that was um, tapping when we bought it. Sounds sweet, isn't that? It is a very faint smoke actually coming from the front manifold. Like it's actually smoking. So I don't know why that is. I thought it would have stopped by now. So maybe there is a leak onto the exhaust. Um, also, the smoke has died down a lot, but it's still smoking. Does that look like a turbo seal to you? I really don't know. It's not something I've dealt with before. I don't really know how to diagnose. Is it engine or turbo related? Because if I go replacing the turbo, how do I know which one it is? Do I replace them both? And if I replace them both, what if it's not that? There's no oil in the coolant. It's not losing coolant. So that's good. Um, my concerns of a head gasket failure are now sort of put to ease. So yeah, probably is a turbo seal, but which one, that is the question. Do I just replace them both? The squeaking has stopped. I think because it's been standing, there's gonna be a lot of things that like sort of start breaking and then <laughs> fix themselves and vice versa. So um, yeah, the squeaking has stopped. I think it's probably a grease, uh, a pulley needed a bit of grease, maybe a sticky bearing or something. Um, I'm probably going to just replace the turbo cartridges anyway and hope that fixes it if I can even find the cartridges um, and if I can't then perfect excuse for a big fat turbo <laughs> but yeah let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one cheers guys couldn't resist but I mean it now we're not starting it till it's fixed <laughs>